Hi everyone. Hope you all are doing good. Today we'll delve in detail to the topic arbitration, mediation and conciliation in India. Arbitration, mediation and conciliation are alternative dispute resolution mechanisms. So what is ADR or alternative dispute redressal mechanisms? It refers to a set of methods and techniques used to resolve legal disputes outside of traditional courtroom litigation. So why do we need these called these things called ADR when we already have so many courts in our country to to uh, resolve legal disputes between persons? This is because our judicial system has this is because our judicial system already have too many number of backlog cases and each case require long long years to complete its judge to to finish its proceedings and to come to a final judgment and even when we have arrived at a final judgment again we have uh, options of appeal revision review reference and when all these are completed it takes a too much of time for both the parties and we all know justice delayed is justice denied and when justice is so much delayed the point of justice become irrelevant Another factor is that too many, too much of cost is spent in fighting cases and both the parties become fed up running behind these cases. So that's why we require ADR. Now if we look at the statistics on cases pending in our courts, the statistics is given by National Judicial Data Grid or NJDG. If we look at 0 to 1 year old cases, 28.65% of both civil and criminal cases are pending. Looking at 1 to 3 year old cases, 26.73% of cases are pending. The list is long and we don't want to spend so much time. We just have to know that the total number of cases pending in our judicial system add up to 44,305,944, such a huge number. And that's why we need ADR mechanisms to deal with the legal disputes in, in our country. In addition to that, ADR provides parties with flexible and efficient means to address conflicts and reach mutually acceptable solutions. ADR promotes collaboration, preserves relationships and often results in faster and more cost-effective resolutions compared to formal court proceedings. If we look at the history of ADR in India, ADR mechanisms in India have ancient roots with reference to mediation and arbitration dating back to ancient texts such as Vedas. During British colonial rule, ADR methods continued to be used albeit with Western legal influences. The modern era of ADR in India began with the enactment of the Arbitration Act 1940, which provided a legal framework for arbitration proceedings. However, it was the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996 that revolutionized ADR in India by providing a comprehensive framework for both domestic and international arbitration and mediation. This act was enacted to align India's arbitration laws with international standards, promote institutional arbitration and streamline the dispute resolution process. Over the years, there has been a growing recognition and acceptance of ADR methods in India, with the judiciary actively encouraging parties to explore mediation and arbitration as alternatives to traditional litigation. Additionally, India has witnessed the establishment of various arbitral institutions and mediation centers, further promoting the use of ADR mechanisms. Today, ADR continues to play a crucial role in the Indian legal system, offering parties to a faster, cost-effective and more flexible means of resolving dispute. So coming to uh, the Indian context of ADR, India adopted the legal framework for ADR in, uh, according to the New York Convention. The New York Convention, formerly known as the United Nations Convention on Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitral Award, is an international treaty. It was adopted in 1958 and entered into force in 1959 with the aim of promoting the use of arbitration for the resolution of international commercial disputes. 
The convention provides a framework for the recognition and enforcement of arbitral awards made in other contracting states. It has been widely adopted with over 160 countries as signatories, making it one of the most successful treaties in the field of international dispute resolution. India acceded to the New York Convention in 1960, which was later enacted into domestic law under the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996. The New York Convention has played a significant role in promoting international arbitration and facilitating the enforcement of arbitral awards across borders. Coming to the importance of ADR in resolving legal disputes, we have already talked about some of the points such as time efficiency, cost efficiency. The first one is efficiency itself. ADR methods such as arbitration, mediation and conciliation offer quicker resolution of disputes compared to traditional litigation saving time and resources for all parties involved. The second one is cost effectiveness of course ADR pro processes are generally less expensive than going to court as they involve fewer procedural formalities and legal fees. Next one is flexibility allows parties to customize the resolution process to suit their specific needs and preferences, providing greater control over the outcome. Next, preservation of relationships. See what we normally see in courtrooms is that both the parties, whether it is in especially in familial disputes or whether it is in commercial disputes both the parties become humiliated so much that the relationship is ruined forever there is not no uh, uh, there is no chance for a second contract or a second chance of relationship between those parties but when it comes to adr unlike adversarial uh, ad uh, adversarial litigation adr methods focus on collaboration and communication helping parties maintain or even strengthen their relationships while resolving disputes it is more like communication and uh, collaboration Fifth point is confidentiality. ADR proceedings are often conducted in private, offering parties confidentiality and protecting, protecting sensitive information from public record. It saves parties from humiliation and their reputation are saved. So they come to better understanding and they come to a consensus between each other. The sixth point is informality. These processes are less formal than courtroom proceedings, which can help reduce tension and facilitate open dialogue between parties. Next comes expertise. ADR allows parties to select neutral third-party facilitators or decision makers with specialized knowledge or expertise relevant to the dispute, ensuring fair and informed outcomes. Access to justice. We already uh, spoke about uh, justice delayed as justice denied. ADR provides a forum for resolving disputes that may not be suitable for litigation due to factors such as complexity, confidentiality, or the desire for a more collaborative solution. Reduced court backlog. By diverting cases away from overload court dockets, ADR helps alleviate pressure on the judicial system and promotes efficient use of court resources. And finally, compliance and enforcement. Agreements reached through ADR processes such as arbitration awards or mediated settlements are legally binding and enforceable, providing parties with a reliable mechanism for ensuring compliance with agreed upon terms. Now coming to the first method of ADR mechanism that we are dealing with today, arbitration. So what is arbitration? According to Black's Law Dictionary, arbitration is the process by which parties to a dispute submit the differences to the judgment of an impartial person or a group of appointed or a group appointed by mutual consent or statutory provision. Section 2, clause 1A of Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996 defines arbitration as whether or not administered by a permanent arbitral institution. Now, what are the features of arbitration in India? First one is voluntary nature. Parties voluntarily submit to their, uh, submit their disputes to arbitration. Section 7 deals with it. Section 7 says that arbitration agreement to be in writing. So let's see what Section 7 uh, says, the verbatim of Section 7 of uh, Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1997, 1996, sorry. Uh, section 7, Clause 1 says, in this part, arbitration agreement means an agreement by the parties to submit to arbitration all or certain disputes which have arisen or which may arise between them in respect of a defined legal relationship, whether contractual or not. Clause 3 says, an arbitration agreement shall be in writing. The second feature is neutral third-party decision-maker. Arbitration is presided over by a neutral arbitrator or panel of arbitrators. Section 10 says that number of arbitrators, Section 10 deals with number of arbitrators and appointment proceedings. Section 10 of Arbitration and Conciliation Act reads as follows. Clause 1, the parties are free to determine the number of arbitrators provided that such number shall not be an even number. Clause 2, failing the determination referred to in subsection 1, the arbitral tribunal shall consist of a sole arbitrator. So what is uh, this? So why does it say that the parties can choose uh, the number of arbitrators but not an even number? Because it is easier for finality of decision. When there is an even number of arbitrators, there'll be e if the arbitrators are divided in two decisions, there will be equal and there is an equal number of arbitrators divided in those decisions. It will be difficult to it, it, there will be an option to give an appeal or approach a higher authority for the finality of decision. But when there is an odd number, we can uh, we can come to the final judgment or decision by uh, choosing the decision which is supported by the most number of arbitrators. And clause 2 says that if the parties fail to determine uh, the number of arbitrators, if they are not in consensus with each other, then there will be one arbitrator, sole arbitrator. The next feature is uh, informal proceedings. Arbitration proceedings are less formal compared to court litigation. This is dealt with in section 19. Coming to the next section, uh, feature, binding decision, arbitrator's decision or award, arbitral, this arbitral decision is called as award, as final and binding on the parties. Section 35 deals with the finality of arbitral award. Section 35 reads as follows, uh, subject to this part, an arbitral award shall be final and binding on the parties and persons claiming under them respectively. The next feature is confidentiality. Next feature is enforceability. 
arbitral awards are enforceable in courts section 36 deals with the same Uh, the section 36 of arbitration and conciliation act lays that enforcement of an arbitral award in a domestic arbitration is to be carried out in is to be carried out in the same manner as done in a decree passed by the court upon expiry of limitation for moving objection petition under section 34 of 1996 act had expired or the objection petition has been dismissed the execution process can be initiated originally the arbitration act did not specify as to whether the operation of a domestic arbitral award would be stayed while the objection petition under section 34 of the arbitration act is pending disposal on this aspect supreme court had in national aluminium company limited nalco versus press steel and fabrication private limited and another 2004 1 scc 2004 1 scc 540 held that once a domestic arbitral award is challenged under section 34 of 1996 act it becomes unexecutable it was through the arbitration and conciliation amendment act 2015 which sought to end the era of automatic stay rule the amended section 36 stipulated that the uh, that the mere filing of a challenge under section 34 would not render a domestic arbitral award unenforceable and a stay of the operation of the award would have to be specifically sought from and granted by the relevant court now coming to the next feature limited judicial interference courts have a limited role in arbitral proceedings and it is dealt with in section 5 uh, section 5 the verbatim goes like this extent of judicial intervention notwithstanding anything contained in any other law for the time being in force in matters governed by this part no judicial authority shall intervene except where so provided in this part and finally flexibility in proceedings procedure parties have flexibility in determining procedural rules and it is dealt section 19 freedom to determine procedure Section nineteen reads as follows: Determination of rules and procedure, clause one. I mean, clause two. Subject to this part, the parties are free to agree on the procedure to be followed by the arbitral tribunal in conducting its proceedings. Clause three. Failing any agreement referred to in subsection two, the arbitral tribunal may, subject to this part, conduct the proceedings in the manner it considers appropriate. Clause four: The power of arbitral tribunal under subsection three includes the power to determine the admissibility, relevance, materiality, and weight of any evidence. So, in coming to a procedure of arbitration in India, how arbitration takes place in India? The first one is, of course, the initiation of arbitration. Arbitration is initiated by a party sending a notice to the other party invoking arbitration, and it deals with section twenty-one. Section twenty one is commencement of arbitration proceedings. Next one is appointment of arbitrators. We have already spoke about it. Uh, parties may agree on the number and uh, number and appointment of arbitrators. Section eleven deals with that. And appointment of arbitrators default procedure if parties fail to agree. Those are the subjects that section eleven uh, deals with. We have already read that section. It says that parties can uh, determine the number of arbitrators. Uh, just that it should not be an even number but if they fail to meet a consensus then they have a sole arbitrator next is arbitral tribunals uh, powers arbitral tribunal has the authority to conduct proceedings administer oaths and issue interim orders it is dealt with in section 16 section 16 uh, deals with competence of arbitral tribunal to rule on its jurisdiction Coming to the next point, pleadings and evidence. Parties submit their claims and defences along with supporting evidence. Section nineteen deals with it. Equal treatment of parties, determination of rules and procedures. All these topics are dealt in section nineteen. Next is hearing and proceedings. Arbitral tribunal conducts hearings and receives evidence from both parties. Section twenty four deals with hearings and written proceedings. Though all, though all these procedures. uh seems to look like court proceedings like litigation it is not actually that way it is more uh, informal uh more open so that the parties can have an open discussion open up their hearts without the fear of loss of reputation loss of money time everything and they come to a mutually respected decision finally and their dispute is resolved 
Next point is interim measures and orders. Arbitral tribunal may grant interim measures to prevent to preserve assets or prevent harm. Section 17 says interim measures by arbitral tribunal. Closing of proceedings. Once parties have presented their cases, the arbitral tribunal closes the proceedings. Section 23 deals with closing of proceedings, statement of claims, and defense counterclaim and everything. Award, the arbitral tribunal renders its final decision known as the award, resolving the dispute. That is the final, like the judgment of a court, the decision of the arbitral tribunal is now called the award. And section 31 deals with form and contents of arbitral award. Enforcement of award, the award is enforceable in courts and binding on the parties. Section 36 deals with enforcement of arbitral awards. Though the courts have limited jurisdiction in arbitration, it can be the arbitral award can be enforced in the courts. Cost and expenses. Each party bears its own cost and tribunal may allocate cost in the final award. Section th uh, 31 deals with cost. Challenge and set aside. Parties may challenge the arbitral award in court under limited grounds. Section 34 uh, deals with the application for setting aside arbitral award. We have already uh, told that uh, in, in a traditional courtroom litigation, we have options such as appeal, revision, review, reference, etc., which again elongates the time needed to completion for the, for the completion of a case or dispute or legal dispute. But in case of arbitration, since this is a more informal, uh, confidential, and much more convenient method, and the parties are have their own uh conveniences uh, options to choose for their own com conveniences uh, the decision would be more favorable and they're expected to follow that decision so uh, as it is stated here that setting aside to set aside the arbitral uh, award it is only allowed for under limited grounds it is because all these conveniences and advantages that the parties get the and to stop the litigation being dragged into long long years and creating backlog of cases spending time and money wasting it that it is only allowed in limited grounds and finally finality of award arbitral awards are final and not subjected to appeal except on limited grounds we have already said that and section 35 deals with finality of arbitral awards coming to the next slide we'll look into the important case laws in arbitration in india the first one being Bharat Aluminium Company versus Kaiser Aluminium Technical Service. In that is, it is also called as Balco case. Facts briefly is dispute arose between Bharat Aluminium Company Balco and Kaiser Aluminium Technical Service regarding termination of an agreement. Balco initiated initiated arbitration in India, but Kaiser sought to challenge the arbitration agreement in Indian courts. The ratio was Supreme Court held that Part One of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, nineteen ninety six applies only to arbitration seated in India. Parties can choose a foreign seat and exclude the applicability of part 1. The next case is BCCI versus Kochi Cricket Private Limited. Facts is Kochi, Private, uh, Kochi Cricket Private Limited, Kochi Tuskers Kerala challenged its termination from the Indian Premier League or IPL by the Board of Control for Cricket in India BCCI. Kochi initiated arbitration seeking reinstatement. Ratio is that Supreme Court held, upheld the validity of arbitration clause and directed the parties to resolve the dispute through arbitration, emphasizing the importance of alternative dispute resolution in sports disputes. World Sports Group Mauritius Limited vs. MSM Satellite Singapore Private Limited. The facts in brief are follows dispute arose regarding a media rights agreement for broadcasting ipl or indian premier league matches the arbitration clause provided for arbitration in singapore the ratio was that supreme court held that when parties choose a foreign seat of arbitration indian courts have limited jurisdiction to interfere with arbitration proceedings and enforcement of awards next case is ongc limited versus so pipes limited the facts goes as follows. Dispute arose between ONGC Limited and So Pipes Limited regarding a contract for supply of pipes. Arbitration clause provided for arbitration in accordance with UN Citral rules, and the ratio is that Supreme Court emphasized the autonomy of arbitral tribunals in conducting their proceedings and interpreting contracts, limiting the scope of judicial intervention. Finally, Sundaram Finance Limited versus NEPC India Limited. Facts 
dispute arose regarding a lease agreement between Sundaram Finance Limited and NEPC Lim India Limited. NEPC sought to challenge the arbitral award in Indian courts. And the Supreme Court held that courts should not interfere with arbitral awards unless there is a fundamental error of law or public policy violation promoting finality and enforcement of awards. That's all about arbitration. Now coming to the second ADR mechanism, mediation. So what's mediation? Black Law's Dictionary states defines mediation as a method of dispute resolution involving a neutral third party who tries to help the disputing parties reach a mutual, mutually agreeable solution. In the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996, mediation is not explicitly defined as a separate term. However, Section 30 of the Act mentions conciliation as one of the methods of settlement of disputes and it defines it. So, since mediation and conciliation, there is no much, uh, not very much difference between them, we can understand the definition of mediation from the definition of conciliation. The Mediation Act 2023 also does not explicitly provide a separate definition of mediation. However, mediation can be understood from the Act within the context of the Act as a voluntary and confidential process in which a neutral third party known as the mediator facilitates communication and negotiation between parties to a dispute with the aim of reaching a mutually acceptable settlement. Like arbitration and mediation have similar features including voluntary process, neutral third party, confidentiality. We have talked about all of this and that's why I am not dealing it in detail. Most of the ADR mechanisms have similar features informality mutually agreed settlement settlement that is parties work together to reach a mutually accepted resolution cost effective these are the features of mediation now coming to the next slide legal framework for mediation in india the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996, while primarily fo focusing on arbitration, this act also includes provision for conciliation, which is closely related to mediation. So the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, though, it's, it, though it does not have explicit provisions for conciliation, the provisions for, uh, pardon, the explicit provisions for mediation, the provisions for conciliation, since it is both are similar, very much similar to each other, the provisions for conciliation are also used for mediation. Civil Procedure Code 1908 CPC. Section 89 of CPC provides for alternative dispute resolution mechanism including mediation. Now, it was until 2023 that these uh, legal legislations were used and uh, when uh, and on 2023 the Mediation Act got passed. This act was introduced to enhance the effectiveness of mediation in India and provide a comprehensive legislative framework for its implementation. It promotes institutional mediation, provides for the enforcement of mediated settlement agreements and establishes a Mediation Council of India for regulating mediators and mediation institutions. Coming to Mediation Act 2023, let's see it in a bit more detail some of the features of it. The first one is promotion of mediation. The Mediation Act 2023 introduced in India encompasses several significant features aimed at enhancing the effectiveness of mediation and providing a comprehensive framework for its implementation. Some key features of Mediation Act 2023 include promotion of mediation. The Act aims to promote and facilitate mediation as a means of resolving disputes both commercial and non-commercial in India. Second one is institutional mediation. The Act emphasizes the establishment and recognition of institutional mediation, providing a structured framework for mediation proceedings. Next is enforcement of mediated settlement agreements. It provides for the enforcement of mediated settlement agreements, making them legally binding and enforceable in accordance with the provisions of the Act. Registration of mediators. The Act establishes a Mediation Council of India to regulate and accredit mediators and mediation institutions, ensuring their competence and adherence to professional standards. Pre-litigation mediation. Parties are encouraged to engage in pre-litigation mediation. Pre-litigation mediation ha uh, had brought drastic changes in the me in mediation in India because uh, it is even before filing of a case parties are sent for pre-litigation mediation and thereby and in most cases they come to a consensus and their their legal dispute is resolved 
and in case of uh, there is a provision in uh, the uh, mediation act 2023 which allows for commercial cases below a certain amount for compulsory pre litigation mediation next is confidentiality the act ensures confidentiality of mediation proceedings protecting the privacy of the parties involving and promoting open communication during mediation time bound process it stipulates a time bound process for mediation proceedings encouraging timely resolution for disputes and avoiding unnecessary delays flexibility the act provides flexibility in the conduct of mediation proceedings allowing parties to customize the processes according to their needs and preferences recognition of online mediation it recognizes online mediation as an acceptable and cost cost effective method of dispute resolution especially in cases where physical presence is impractical and finally the act introduced amendments to existing statutes such as the indian contract act 1872 to align them with the consistent with the new mediation framework and promote consistency in legal principles coming to the next slide we have the case laws yes important case laws of mediation in india which have provided precedents the first one is s gyan singh versus state of punjab 2012 The facts in brief are the case involves a criminal matter where the parties reached a settlement during mediation proceedings. However, the trial court refused to quash the criminal proceedings despite the settlement. The Supreme Court held that in a criminal cases, if the parties reach settlement and the victim or complainant agrees to compound the offence, the High Court can quash the criminal proceedings under Section 482 of the Code of Criminal Procedure. Salem Advocate Bar Association versus Union of India 2005 the facts in brief the case dealt with the constitutionality of section 89 of the civil procedure code which provides for alternative dispute resolution methods including mediation the ratio is that the supreme court upheld the constitutional validity of section 89 emphasizing the importance of alternative dispute resolution mechanisms in reducing the burden on courts and promoting speedy resolution of disputes Finally, Fcons Infrastructure Limited versus Cheryan Murthy Cost Construction Company Limited, 2010. The facts goes like this: the case involved a construction contract dispute referred to mediation under Section 89 of the Civil Procedure Code. The mediator prepared a settlement agreement, but one party refused to sign it. The ratio is that the Supreme Court held that once parties agree to mediation, they are bound by the terms of the settlement agreement. reached through the process and courts can enforce such agreements now coming to the final adr mechanism we'll be discussing today that is conciliation so what's conciliation black's law dictionary defines conciliation as a form of alternative dispute resolution in which parties to a dispute use a conciliator who meets the parties separately in an attempt to resolve their differences Unlike mediation, conciliation often involves the conciliator giving advice to the parties. Section sixty one, clause one of Arbitration Conciliation Act, nineteen ninety six, defines conciliation as a process in which a conciliator assists the parties in an impartial manner in their attempt to reach an amicable settlement of the dispute arising out of or relating to the agreement. Now let's go into the details. That is features of conciliation. as usual we have already said about some of the details some of these features in the previous sections of arbitration and mediation impartial assistance in conciliation a neutral third party known as the conciliator assists the parties in reaching a settlement but unlike mediation the conciliator may actively pro- uh, propose solutions to the dispute unlike arbitration mediation conciliator have very limited role in in case of conciliation and uh, he does not have the power to reach a final decision he just have the power to be a facilitator and uh, and uh, actively propose op- options for the parties or resolutions to the parties section 61 clause 1 defines conciliation that we have already seen what sec- that we have all we have already seen what section 61 clause 1 says Next one is advisory role. Unlike arbitration, where the arbitrator renders a binding decision, a mediation, where the mediator facilitates negotiation without proposing solutions, the the conciliator may provide advisory opinions and suggestions to the parties. Section sixty two empowers the conciliator to make proposals for settlement at any stage of the conciliation proceedings.
conciliation proceedings are less formal compared to arbitration while arbitration follows a structured legal process akin to litigation conciliation allows for more flexible and informal discussions section 63 provides that the conciliator may conduct the proceedings in a manner suitable to the circumstances allowing for flexibility and informality next is confidentiality as most other adr mechanisms conciliation is also confidential similar to mediation conciliation proceedings are confidential section 67 ensures that the conciliation proceedings and communications made during conciliation are confidential and cannot be disclosed in any circum- subsequent proceedings next one is non binding outcome the outcome of conciliation is non binding unless the parties voluntarily agree to formalize the settlement reached during conciliation into a binding agreement section 73 clarifies that any settlement agreement reached through the conciliation is non binding unless the parties agree to its enforcement under section 74 Next is voluntary participation. Parties uh, participate in conciliation voluntarily, and they can withdraw from the process at any time. Unlike arbitration, where parties are bound by the arbitration agreement, participation in conciliation is entirely voluntary. Section sixty-two, clause one, states that the parties must consent to conciliation voluntarily, and they have the freedom to withdraw from the process at any time. Finally, preservation of relationship, like most other ADR systems or mechanisms, section sixty-one, clause three, emphasizes the conciliator's role in facilitating communication and understanding between the parties to preserve their relationship. Now, let's talk about the procedure of conciliation or how conciliation is carried out in Indian context. The first one is, of course, commencement of conciliation proceedings. Section sixty-two deals with the commencement of conciliation proceedings, and it states that conciliation proceedings begin when one party sends a written invitation to the other party to participate in in conciliation. This invitation formally initiates the process. Second one is appointment of conciliator. Upon receiving the invitation, both parties jointly appoint a conciliator. The conciliator is a neutral third party who facilitates the conciliation process. This is uh, dealt with in section sixty four and section sixty four clause one b says if the parties fail to agree on a conciliator, either party may request the court to appoint one. Third one is role of conciliator. Section sixty five says that conciliator conducts the proceedings in a manner he considers appropriate, taking into account the circumstances of the case, but it should be in a fair and proper manner. Section sixty seven states conciliator assists the parties in identifying issues, exploring settlement options, and formulating settlement terms. Fourth one is confidentiality of proceedings. We've already seen section seventy five deals with confidentiality. Next is settlement agreement. Section seventy four. If the parties reach a settlement agreement, the conciliator draws up and signs the settlement agreement, which becomes binding on the parties. Coming to the sixth point, termination of conciliation proceedings. Section seventy three deals with it. Conciliation proceedings terminate upon the execution of a settlement agreement, or if the parties notify the conciliator or of their decision to terminate the proceedings. The parties may terminate the proceedings at any time of the conciliation, unlike arbitration or mediation. Seventh point is role of court in conciliation. Section seventy three, clause five. The court may, on the application of either party or the conciliator, extend the time for conciliation proceedings if it deems necessary. And finally, the enforcement of settlement agreement. Section seventy four says that settlement agreement reached through conciliation may be enforced by the court upon application by either party. Now let us look at this uh, table. It is an it is a comparison for of all these three. ADR mechanisms that we have dealt with right now arbitration mediation conciliation and the major differences between them on the point of decision making authority the decision making authority is vested in uh, in case of arbitration it is with the arbitrator in case of mediation it is with the mediator and in case of conciliation it is the conciliator so an arbitrator makes a binding decision but in case of mediation parties control the outcome the mediator facilitates discussion and in case of conciliator may provide advice but does not make a binding decision coming to the formality formal process with rules and ev- rules of evidence is in the is applicable in the case of arbitration in the case of mediation informal process with flexible rules and when coming to conciliation it is informal process similar to mediation coming to outcome in case of the outcome of arbitral uh, arbitration is arbitral award or award it is a binding decision coming to mediation it is non binding parties reach a voluntary agreement and uh, it is mostly expected to be followed because it is a, more like a dis- discussion and coming to consensus and both parties are happy with that decision and it is mostly followed 
then coming to conciliation non binding unless parties agree to formalize a settlement once it is voluntarily uh, formalized it is binding and finally role of neutral third party are in case of arbitrator the arb arbitration in case of arbitration it is the arbitrators act as decision makers mediator facilitates communication and negotiations in mediation and for conciliation conciliator may provide advice and suggestions so we have come to the conclusion part we have discussed in detail about arbitration mediation and conciliation those are the uh, mechanisms of additional re dispute redressal it offer effective alternatives to traditional litigation and each method have unique features and advantages though time efficiency and cost efficiency uh, informality confidentiality are common to all these procedures arbitration provides a binding decision by a neutral arbitrator mediation conciliation focus on facilitating communication and negotiation the choice of adr method depends on the nature of dispute and parties preferences which which to select between arbitration mediation and conciliation de depends upon the facts of the case circumstances and all that a well established legislative framework supports adr in india adr methods play a significant role in easing the burden of courts and promoting efficient dispute resolution and that's why in recent years there have been a tremendous increase in legal dispute resolution through adr mechanisms of arbitration mediation and conciliation so that's all for today thank you for your time and interest